Hello and welcome to this video on integration on manifolds using the pullback of volume forms part three, so the third in the series. And in this video we will go through a worked example that shows how the volume element in a curved space involving the determinant of the metric tensor is used with a pullback to compute the change in volume under coordinate transformation. And we'll also show how this affects integration over the manifold. All right, so let's make a start. So where are we? Um, well, let's have a look at our manifold M. We have a point P on the manifold. We have a tangent space to the point P on the manifold, tangent space to M at the point P. And on this uh, manifold, we're going to use coordinates X, Y. And over here, we have manifold N. We have the tangent space to manifold N at the point F of P. P is the image uh, F of P is the image of the point P under the map F that takes points on M and maps them to points on N. The inverse map goes this way. In these tangent spaces, vectors exist. None are shown here, just to prevent the diagram from becoming messy. We now have in this tangent space here the coordinates x, y, and over here in this tangent space the coordinates u, v. All right. Um, over here we have the cotangent or dual space. And that's the dual space to n at the point f of p, so upper asterisk indicating the cotangent or dual space. Over here the cotangent space to m, here the asterisk representing the cotangent or dual space. And this is where forms exist. Now these two, the tangent space and the cotangent spaces, are coincident together. They're only separated in the diagrams I use just to prevent those diagrams from becoming cluttered. Same here. All right, this cotangent space is coincident with this one on the manifold. And they are only separated on this diagram to prevent cluttering and confusion that comes with cluttering our diagrams. So we have some form here, the two dimensions, it'd be a two form, in three, a three form, or any any other. I mean, it doesn't have to be a, a form that's equal to the dimension of the tangent space at all. Uh, but in this particular example, we're going to work in two forms throughout. So we've got a two form here and a two form over here. Now the purple line here represents the pullback from this cotangent space to this cotangent space under the map F. So we're pulling back against this red map F. See how we're going? The red map here goes from left to right on your screen. This goes from right to left. So you can see how this is a pullback, hence the terminology, pull back. Uh, in the case of the inverse map here, the blue one, the pullback from there is the green line here. Is the upper asterisk to indicate the pullback. F upper asterisk is the pullback of this form here, whatever it is, K form, N form here, omega F of P, pulling it back to this cotangent space here. And likewise for this pullback here against the blue one. All right, so keep these in mind. We'll have X, Y Cartesian coordinates here, and we'll have uh, UV coordinates here. All right, so volume element and metric in curved space. I'm not going to use a four dimensional curved space here. Otherwise, the equations become large on the screen and distracting, not necessary. So I'm just going to use a two dimensional spatially curved space. So consider a two dimensional curved space, not space time, not space time, with coordinates uv and a metric tensor g defined in these coordinates. Suppose we want to integrate a function over this space. The volume element due to the curvature is given by the square root of the absolute value of the determinant of the metric, du wedge dv, or that's identical to this more abbreviated notation, which means the same thing as square root of the absolute value of the determinant of the metric, du wedge dv. So that's in the uv coordinate system on n, remember, on the right hand manifold on the diagram you were looking at. For this example, let's assume the metric tensor G and the UV coordinates is G is this, 1 plus U squared, 0, 0, E to 2V. Uh, the determinant of G is, the determinant of G is just, well, 
the diagonals multiplied together minus this diagonal multiplied together. So it's just this times that minus zero. Uh, rewriting that as e to the 2v times 1 plus u squared. So that's the determinant of g. Uh, that's the volume element u in uv coordinates becomes the square root of the absolute value of the determinant of g, du which dv. So we get the square root of all this. Okay, And we can take out a factor of e to the v because that's um, e to the power of v squared by the index laws. And so taking the square root means we get e to the power of v out here. All right, so times the square root of 1 plus u squared. Uh, du wedge dv. So that's the uh, volume element in uv coordinates. Now the coordinate transformation and pullback. Now suppose we want to change coordinates to x, y. So we want to come back from the end manifold. I'll come back to the diagram in a minute. And we want to pull it back. So from the right hand side of the screen on the previous diagram back to the left hand side. Defined by the transformation u equals x plus y and v equals x minus y. So that's how the Cartesian are related to the uv coordinates. Now we this is under the map F, which maps points from M to N. So we're going to pull back against that map. F of XY X is X plus Y, X minus Y is U of XY, V of XY, which is the coordinates U, V. Ah, would help perhaps if I could move that. Okay, now our goal is to express the volume element in the new XY coordinates using the pullback. For this, we'll compute the Jacobian of the transformation and use it to express the pullback of the volume form in terms of the x which dy. Okay. So, yes, here we are. Okay, so here's our form over here, du which dv, and we're going to pull that back, that's the purple one, back to here to get dx which dy, All right. plus the, the uh, element in front. Okay, so that was our map F from M to N. We're going to pull back against this map. Okay, this map maps points here, XY coordinate system to the UV coordinate system. And we're going to pull back against that. We're going to take a form in the cotangent space here and pull it back to here. All right, so step one is compute the Jacobian matrix of the transformation. So to apply the pullback, we first need the Jacobian matrix of the transformation, which is obtained by differentiating U and V derivatives with respect to both variables x, y, with respect to x and y, where u is x plus y and v is x minus y. So the deter I'll put it all together. The determinant of the Jacobian, the determinant, this is the Jacobian here, and this is the determinant of the Jacobian, this is the Jacobian here in the square brackets. And if we take the u, partial of u with respect to x, or partial of u with respect to x is just 1, the partial of u with respect to y is 1, okay? Uh, the partial of v with respect to x is 1, uh, and the partial of uh, v with respect to y is minus 1. Then we want the determinant of this. So the determinant of the Jacobian matrix is, here it is, is 1 times negative 1 minus 1 times 1. Okay, so we get minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. Minus 2. That's the determinant of Jacobian. Okay, now... To ensure the area element, because if we're going to be integrating with this, we want this area element to be positive, and then we will integrate accordingly. To ensure the area element remains positive under the transformation, we use the absolute value of the Jacobian determinant, which gives the absolute value of the Jacobian determinant is 2 plus 2. Okay. All right, so step two, transform the volume element using the pullback. So the original volume element in UV coordinates is e to the v square root 1 plus u squared du wedge dv. Okay, and we want to pull this back from the cotangent space to n back to the cotangent space to m on the left, from the right to the left. Under the pullback, we replace du wedge dv with the absolute value of j dx wedge dy. So that's the pullback of the volume form, not the whole form, just the volume form. That gives us plus 2, dx wedge dy. And express e to the v square root 1 plus u squared in terms of x and y. That's So this function here, this scalar function here, we're pulling it back by composing it of the with the function f of x, y. 
right? So substituting u and v in terms of x and y, since u is x plus y, v is x minus y, we find that e to the v, exponentiating this on both sides, e to the v is equal to e to the x minus y. And if you have a look here, 1 plus u squared, well, if I just take uh, u here and I square it, I've got x plus y all squared, so 1 plus u squared is 1 plus x plus y all squared. Therefore, the volume element in xy, so I've taken this and composed it for the function f of xy. Um, so if I call this q, then q composed of f of xy gives me the, uh, this object down here. So therefore, the volume element in xy coordinates becomes e to the x minus y, square root 1 plus x plus y all squared, um, du wedge dv. Um, uh, not quite, because we've still got this bit to finish off. Because remember, this bit du wedge dv is 2 dx wedge dy. So let's put that in there. All right. Now, applying the Jacobian determinant, since du wedge dv is the absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobian, times dx wedge dy is 2 times dx wedge dy. We substitute to obtain this, which we, this scalar function we pulled back earlier. Hence, it's now an xy. And du wedge dv becomes 2 dx wedge dy, 2 dx wedge dy, so that goes in there, times this scalar function here. All right, so the volume element in the xy coordinates is 2 e to the x minus y, e to the power of x plus y, times the square root of 1 plus x plus y all squared, times dx wedge dy. Now, step three. Let's say we wanted to integrate this over some region. Now, suppose we want to integrate a function q of uv over a region f of r contained in n right, in uv coordinates. Notice f is the map which took us from m to n. So if we have a region r contained in m, all right, then the map of that would be, we could say the re corresponding region on n would be f of r under this map. So this region corresponds to a region R contained in M in the XY coordinates. The integral over F of R contained in N becomes, right, so the integral over F of R in N, that's the right-hand cotangent space on our diagram. Okay, so the integral over F of R, okay, that's the cotangent space there, is Q of UV square root the absolute value of the determinant of g, du wedge dv, which we know what that is, that's all in uv coordinates, which we saw at the beginning of the video. And that will give us the same result as the integral of q composed of f of xy times 2 e to the x minus y times all that in the xy coordinates, dx wedge dy. So this integral will give us the same result, the same number as this one. All right. And that's so we've been able to pull this one back from the right-hand cotangent space to the left-hand cotangent space on our diagram. And these two integrals can give us the same result. They're equal to each other. So if I take my two form over here, because that's what we're dealing with, du wedge dv times all this. Okay, and we're going to pull it back to here. Okay, then the integral of omega f of v, all of this, let's just call all of this is omega f of v, so that omega f of p, sorry, omega f of p, just all of that is just omega f of p, and we're going to pull it back to omega p, so all of this will become omega p. So the integral, so under the map f, if we have a region r, then the corresponding region f of r will be over here, that's what I'm trying to show here, with these limits, I've got the integrals here. All right, so okay, so that's what's happening here. We're taking this one here on the right, and we're pulling it back over here. Okay, now let's examine why Q composed of f of x y actually represents Q U V in terms of the x y coordinates using the specifics of the given transformation. So, problem setup: we have a scalar function Q U of V. Remember on the right hand side, on that cotangent space, which is originally defined in terms of the coordinates U V. We introduce a new coordinate system, x, y, on the same space, which is a transformation between the two coordinate systems, given u equals x plus y and v equals x minus y. It could be on different manifolds, it could be on the same manifold, just a coordinate change on the same manifold. This transformation defines a mapping 
f of x, y to u, v coordinates. x, y to u, v coordinates. From x, y space to u, v space. Our goal is to express q, function q, the scalar function q, u of v, in terms of the x, y coordinates. Essentially, pulling back q of u, v to the x, y coordinate system. Okay, why it works. Okay, to understand why q composed of f of x, y correctly represents q of u, v in terms of x, y. Let's go through the steps. One, define the transformation function since u is x plus y and v is x minus y. We can represent u and v in terms as functions, sorry, of x and y using the map f defined by f of x, y equals u, v. If you remember, I showed that start of the video where u is x plus y, v is x minus y. Here, f of x, y transforms each point x, y in the x, y coordinate system into its corresponding point u, v in the u, v coordinate system. So from the left-hand manifold on that diagram, to the right-hand one. Number two, express q of u, v in terms of x, y. The function q, u, of v is originally defined on points in the u, v coordinates. To express q as a function of x, y, instead we substitute the transform transformation sorry, defined by f. So, um, Q of u of v equals Q f of x y equals Q of x plus y x minus y. All right. So we, we compose Q of f of x y. We get this here. All right. So Q u of v is Q of f of x y equals Q of x plus y x minus y. This expression Q f of x y essentially pulls back Q from u v space to x y space. Okay. Because uh, really prior to this video, I haven't really gone into the pullback of um, scalar functions. I, I did it, incidentally, in one of the push-forward videos. But now I thought I'd just give some time to it before I move on. So by substituting u equals x plus y and v equals x minus y directly into q, we obtain the equivalent form of q in the xy coordinates. So we pulled it back to xy coordinates. All right, three, consistency of the map f using q f of xy ensures consistency because f of xy defines the exact relationship between the coordinates x, y, and u, v. Remember, it's a map from f of x, y to u, v. Okay, by using f of x, y equals x plus y, x minus y, we know that wherever q, u, q of u, v appears, it can be equivalent to represent as q of x plus y, x minus y in terms of x, y. All right, so what we have now is, here's our manifold m again. Here's the map from m to n. Okay, so this is a region R here. This will be a region F of R here under this map. All right. so we have our forms up here, our two form in this case. So we could have all of this, we could call omega F of P here if you want, and then pull it back under F to omega of P. All right. But then the integral of this over here is equal to the integral of this over here. And that's what we're getting at here when we when we integrate them. That's what the pullback helps us to do in terms of integration. Okay, so that, that's our diagram there. Uh, our map f, taking point p to point f of p, x y coordinate system, u v coordinate system. Okay. All right. So I hope I hope that's helped everybody. I hope you found that useful and interesting. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please take care, everyone. And if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, down below, also, um, if you like the video, please push the like button and subscribe, if you will. That's helpful to me. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Okay, well, thanks again. Take care. Bye.